Hi, I'm Jim and this is Jim's Fix-It Shop and today I'm going to show you how to remove and replace one of these. This is a newer style and it has both AC and DC coming out of it. The older style, like it's in this engine, has only DC and as you'll see when we get it taken apart it's only a half circle. So, I had a viewer say, Jim, and this guy is a mechanic. I can tell. Because when he asked me, he asked if I had a video that showed how to replace the alternator. And I didn't. So we're going to make one. This is a new stator. They're 125 bucks somewhere in there. So I want to be careful with this. We're going to set that over there. Now, I got this on a turntable so we can spin it around so you don't miss anything. Now the old machines, my uncle had an old, what was that thing? It wasn't a case. I'm not sure what the name was, but that had a alternator slash starter. One item did both. You put power to one side of it and it spun the engine over. And once the engine started, the other side generated 12 volts to charge your battery and run your headlights. It did both. So he's half right. We're going to take this thing apart and show you where the stator is and how to change it out. <coughs> I've got some tools here. <coughs> Let's see. First thing we want to do is we want to take the cover off. But we want to get this oil dipstick tube out of the way. Now all these machines are probably going to be different. This one has a Phillips screw that holds the clamp on that holds the dipstick tube in place. So we just want to get that tipped over a little bit. We don't really want to pull it out, get oil everywhere. Next thing we want to do is we're going to take off the air breather assembly. Now this is a good engine and I have I don't do a lot of engine work and uh, I have it sitting uh, bolted to the part of a rear case off a snapper so that I can, when I get them fixed, I can actually start them sitting on this platform, not on the turntable. These long 2x4s I have on here so that I can clamp it to the bench and I use that bench over there that's supposed to be here but I gotta get this welding plasma table out of here and get it painted so I can just leave it in my lean-to where it's going to be used but it's too cold out right now to paint I do have my door open and that's because I have two snappers out by the road and I don't want the bags to disappear and uh, this morning when I got up it was 35 degrees. I don't like cold weather, so I started a fire in a wood furnace, and now it's it's 86 degrees in here, and I I just love it. <laughs> now we want to take this cover off. We're going to need a 7/16 socket, I believe. No, I lied. I've got some sockets laying around here. If I can find the one I need. Oh, lost that one. This, I believe, we'll look at it and make sure this is 3 8 And ah, uh, that's what we want. We're going to take these two bolts out of the front of the cover that are 3 8 Now again, your engine may be different. I don't know. Maybe we'll tip you down just a little bit. There you go. Who wants to look at me? Now on the back side, 
we have two bolts holding the cover on. And them are, where's my socket? There we go. These are half inch. Now on some machines, this cover is held on with the head bolts that hold the head on to the engine. So they're a little bit harder to get out. These are just screwed into the sheet metal cover. I think they have some kind of a nut crimped in there for the bolts to go into. Now, the next thing you have to take off, and you'll need a quarter inch nut driver, is the starter cover, if you have a starter. Because it wraps underneath, and you won't be able to pull the cover off with that on and these are like a sheet metal screw but they are also a shoulder bolt let me see if i can show it to you that little shoulder on there that is so you don't over tighten it and break the plastic wasn't that nice of them now we should be able to pull this cover off Normally I can set that stuff on the bench, but when I'm spinning these two by fours around, things are gonna get knocked on the floor. Now you want your quarter inch nut driver again. There's four small screws on this screen that holds it to the nut in the center. So you wanna take them out. Now these are an actual machine screw. So don't get these mixed up with the sheet metal screw that holds the cover over the starter. And again, there are four of these screwing into the aluminum ears on this nut. So you want to be careful you don't over torque these and break them off if they're corroded into the aluminum. Now we take the cover screen off. Now we got this nut on here. Now it's not a standard nut. Let me see if I can lift you up. It's an aluminum housing with four ears on it and they're all aluminum. Now when I was younger and a little less experienced, I used to put a block of wood up against one of these ears and hit it with a hammer and spin it loose. <coughs> but I broke a lot of ears doing that so I was told, hey, you know, there's a socket made to remove them. And this is what it looks like. It's got four slots in it. And if you notice, they're different width. And these ears are different widths. So it only goes on one of two ways. This way or 90 degrees or 180 degrees around the other way. Easiest way to get that off is an impact. You can do it with a uh, ratchet. Depends how many muscles you got. This old boy is pretty much muscled out. Now, when you take this off, you do not grab onto this top. It's tempting. If you do, you're gonna pull this thing apart you're going to lose all the balls inside of this nut because this not only is this the nut that holds the flywheel on sorry about that this will turn in one direction and not the other way that is how you can start this thing with the rope you pull it it locks because of the balls in there and when the engine starts running the balls fly out to the outside and this spins free. We'll set that down over here. Now the next thing we have to do, there's two bolts down in here that holds down a piece of sheet metal, kind of like a washer, in this plastic fan. We want to take them out. And them, I believe, are half inch. 
it would help if I went the right way. I'll make sure I cut that blue boo out when I upload. Oh wait, I don't do editing. So you're going to see that. Get these two bolts out. And this will lift right off. Now, to get the flywheel off, some people use a wheel puller. I used to also. And I never have, but you can crack your flywheel doing that. That's a no-no. What you want to do is get yourself, it's called a steering wheel puller. You can get them at Harbor Freight. Bite my tongue for saying that. This one is from CarQuest. And yes, if you look real close right there, it's made in the USA. So the pieces we need, I dropped one of the washers. It comes with, well, let me show you. It comes with several different long bolts. Depending if it's quarter inch or 5 16 finer coarse thread. And it also comes with a foot if your crank doesn't have a hole in the end for the driver to go into. This one is 5 16 coarse thread. And I'll try to set that over there without dropping it on the floor. We got to spin this thing way down to the bottom by the looks of it. Isn't that fun? Okay. We gotta even go lower than that. I guess I should pick up a little bit longer bolts just in case. But I don't do a lot of engine work. I've said that a lot. That's not my thing, I guess, to do. Now this particular one is 9 16 That's a half. This is the one I believe I need. No, it's not. Where is my 9 16 Ah, it's hiding over here. Now this we want to tighten. <coughs> And I don't know where my big screwdriver. I tried to lay everything out I needed, but you know how that goes. I don't think that's not going to fit in there. What did I do with my big screwdriver? Here it is. As you can tell, Jim's been pounding on the end of his screwdriver, which is not a good thing. Okay, you want to tighten that up. Then you want a steel hammer for shock. You don't want to drive this thing home. You just want to tap on it. That's all it takes. The shock from the hammer goes through into the crank. And pops it right off. Now you can take these out. Put them away later. And you can lift the flywheel off. First, I guess I should tell you, do yourself a favor. I've got the disc on the bottom here. Turn it so the magnet is not up against the coil. It'll come off a lot easier. And you can lift it right off. Now this is an older engine, cheaper I guess. It only has a DC stator. And you can tell by one wire sticking out. The newer ones have two wires. And I might as well tell you this. 
if you get a new engine to put on your snapper, it's going to have a stator like this in it. And it's going to have two wires with a plug. So if you got a new machine and you blew the engine, it'll plug right in. If you got an older machine like this engine came off of, you only need one of these wires. Now you can either check it with a meter to see which one's AC and which one's DC. Or you can just look for that bump in the wire. That is a diode. That is on the 12 volt DC side. That is in there so when the engine's running, that diode lets the current through to charge the battery. If that wasn't on there and you shut your engine off, the current would back up into the stator and drain your battery dead and you could also burn up the stator. So the wire with the diode is your 12 volt DC. The other one's 12 volt AC for the headlights. Why do you need AC to run a DC headlight bulb? I have no clue but that's just the way they do it. Now here you go. I'll show you what this stator looks like. Now to get this off, there's only two bolts that hold it down. If it was a round newer one, there would be four bolts holding it down. You remove these two bolts and you just pull the thing out. The wire should come out between the block and the starter plate. If not, it gets stuck you'll have to remove the starter, which on this one is looks like just these top two bolts the starter will come off. Now to put this thing back together, it's the same thing. I'm going to turn this so the key is facing the camera. These 2 by 4 sticking out here look, makes it a little, little hard. Now inside the flywheel on this particular one, you're going to see the key is stuck. So now we got to put the flywheel on and line up the key slot in the flywheel to the key slot in the crank. And, of course, I should have a flashlight here. Once you get that lined up, you can put the key in. Now, if you have trouble with your engine starting, if you try to start it and it backfires, or it won't start at all, this could be the culprit. This is a cast iron flywheel and a steel crankshaft and an aluminum key. It does not take much to shear this off. If you're mowing your yard, not so much with a rider, but a walk behind, and you hit something, a stump, a rock, a pipe, that could be just enough to not shear this, but if you pull this out and look at it, let me get a little screwdriver here. You will see little lines right on the side. And that little line is from, it started to shear, but it stopped. That'll be just enough to throw off your timing. So now what you want to shove this down in here. And sometimes it can be a problem. You want to shove that all the way down in as far as you can get it. Then you want to put this big heavy washer back on. Now, you're going to be tempted to put this nut back on here, but not yet. <laughs> you got to put your fan back on. And the bolts are still in here.
Yes, I'm old school. I like these old wrenches. They call them speed wrenches. And they were a lot faster than a regular wrench or a ratchet. things spinning around here. I can't always find my sockets. They're underneath of a 2x4. Or if you've got a air ratchet, that's even better. Okay, we got that on. Now we'll put the nut on. And remember, don't pick it up by the top. Let me pop this open. And I'll show you what's inside of it. Now this is the cover and it has a rubber seal around the top. It would help to put a little oil on that so this rotates better. Now this is hard going to be hard to do because there's no shaft up through the center of it to keep this centered. But inside of here, let me tip this down. Inside of here is the balls. And the way this is made, when you turn this, the balls are pushed up this ramp. But when you turn it this way, they get caught in there, and then you can use your recoil to start your engine. Once the engine starts, centrifugal force throws them balls up out of the way, and this thing just spins free. That's why you have a large, smooth shaft up here. That is to make this thing work. Now I'm not going to worry about oiling this because I have to tear this down and put rings and a valve job on it and see if I can get some more compression. Now I hold this down and spin this thing. And you can put your socket on. And tighten it up. And that's it. Well, I think the hardest part is coming. Getting this cover on and getting it tucked in all this sheet metal stuff. A small screwdriver helps because this never wants to go in where it's supposed to be. So you can pry that out. And then try to get that down in there. Sometimes it can be a problem. There, that got snapped in. That's in. This is not. It really does help to have this on a turntable because I don't have to walk around and around the bench. Get my wrench out here. that back in. That's not the one I want. There it is. That one back in. I need something over here to get my ratchet. Now these back two, one's a little longer because it has to go through the bracket for the muffler. And this one's a little shorter. I believe them are the same size head. Well, I guess not.
These are 7 sixteenths. The other ones were 3 eighths. Now, the last thing we have to put on is this cover. And I forgot something, but like I said, I have to tear this down to put rings and valves in it. So I'm not going to worry about that piece that I didn't put in. I have everything kind of sitting off to the side and I didn't see it, so it didn't get put on. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. After you view this and you think you know what I forgot to do, the first person that emails me, well, not all of you know my email address, so let's not say that. The first person that puts a note in the description below the video will win one of these magnetic pickup tools. It extends out. I use one on my table saw because I have a cabinet saw now, and when I drop the nut or the washer for the blade, it doesn't land on the floor. It's inside the machine. So you have to pick it up with this, and you also have to, apparently I didn't take the thing out of the battery. This one I did. You have to take this apart inside where the batteries are. There's a little piece of plastic you have to take out. That way the batteries don't go dead before you get it. I will remove that for you. This is the one I use on my table saw. They're identical. They're from Dick Dykehouse. A friend of mine gives me stuff to give away. And like I said, the first person that puts a note in the description box under the video that tells me what I forgot to do will win this. So that's all there is to putting in a stator. I forgot the name of the man that texted me or emailed me and wanted to know how to do this, but I will send him an email and tell him to look for this video to let him know how he can change out his alternator or stator, whatever you want to call it. And boy, look at that, you still pull the rope. Oh, that's compression. Maybe I don't need rings. But that's it for today. And uh, please, sub sub boy, I gotta spit that out. Please subscribe. I need subscribers. I don't want to be kicked off YouTube for a while. I don't know if it was just some hoax they were sending out or if YouTube or Google actually plans on the people that don't have a certain number of subscribers will get canceled. I, I can't really blame them, I guess. Video takes up so much storage. It is unreal the amount of computer storage you need. And look at the millions of people that are on YouTube and all the videos they have. This place has buildings full of nothing but computers storing data. And uh, I, I don't know how they do it, to tell you the truth. But they're making big dollars off the commercials they put on these videos. So once in a while, if you're bored, watch a video or watch a commercial. It helps. So that's it. Until next time, 
work safe, have fun, and keep on snapping. We'll talk to you soon. So long.